Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and today was WWDC 24, so we're gonna go through everything that happened as quickly as possible. Ready, set, good morning! We open with Apple TV Plus and some shows that are happening, then we move to Vision OS 2 for the half dozen people who actually own a Vision Pro. The Vision Pro is expanding outside the US within the next couple months, and the US does some things. Let's move on to iOS 18. Your home screen can be much more customizable now, with apps no longer being restricted to a grid setup, as well as some new looks to the icons. Control Center gets more robust, you can now lock an app behind authentication, as well as hide it away completely. I is getting quite a bit better with tap backs replacing reactions and some text formatting along with new effects. The email app has received an update with categories for messages. You can send cash just by holding two phones together. There's now a game mode, which minimizes background activity to help performance. The Photos app has been redesigned with a single view, making it easier to navigate. RCS is coming. AirPods are getting better. Apple TV is getting a few updates, but nothing super exciting. Now we move to WatchOS. We're getting the typical new fitness features with a training load measurement. There's now a Vitals app. There's an improved Photos watch face. Then iPad OS 18. This includes the basic iOS 18 updates in the home screen, Control Center, and Photos app. There's a new floating bar letting you navigate to a different part of an app. Animations have been refined and will feel more responsive. SharePlay allows you to control someone's iPad or iPhone remotely. And calculators. Calculators coming to iPad? Calculators coming to iPad. Holy crap. After 14 years, we're finally getting it. This is amazing. There's some cool stuff with the Apple Pencil. You can write out equations and it'll actually get the answer for you. The Notes app is getting better with Smart Script, which makes your handwriting look a bit nicer and just makes it more versatile. And now we move to Mac OS. Continuity is getting better and we now have iPhone mirroring, allowing you to actually see and control your iPhone from your Mac as well as drag and drop items and files between them. Keychain is getting better, Safari is getting better, gaming is getting better. I'm purposely being vague for the length of this video, but let's just go ahead and jump into the big thing people are going to be talking about, artificial intelligence. AI will be deeply integrated into all of their platforms and will allow for understanding of languages, images, action, and personal context. This will be really good for writing tools, and there's also basic generative AI. There's a big emphasis on privacy. As much will run on your device as it can, but it'll jump to the cloud if it needs to for extra processing power. Siri now looks different and is finally getting a real improvement. You can now type to Siri instead of talking. Siri is getting much more versatility with what she can do and how she can do it, and they're planning to continue to improve this over time. The Mail app is getting some benefits from AI, including a smart reply feature. AI will also allow for summarization of notifications. There is now Genmoji, which allows you to create a new emoji on your keyboard. This is real. This is a real thing. There's a lot more to this, like an app called Image Playground, which allows you to generate images and things like that. There's audio transcription. You're going to be able to repair photos and that sort of thing. If you got to boil it down, it's basically Copilot but on iPhone slash Mac slash iPad. Siri actually can use ChatGPT if you wanted to. If my explanation feels disjointed, that's because Apple's presentation was exactly that. But that's about the gist of things. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and I will see you all next time.